What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to install and set up Steam Link on your Raspberry Pi running 64-bit Bullseye. Why am I so specific? Well, Bullseye is the latest Raspbian OS release and 64-bit is what you should be using if you want better performance on a Pi. My previous video showed you how to install Bullseye 64 on a Raspberry Pi. However, if you want to use something like Steam Link, which is what this video shows you, things are a little bit different. Steam Link doesn't support the latest release of Raspbian OS. Instead, if you'd like to run it out of the box, you'll need to download and install the legacy Raspbian OS Buster. Now, the thing is, is that there's pretty much no difference other than the fact that you need to, well, reinstall your OS with an older version that no longer gets security updates or install that older OS on a separate SD card. If you choose to downgrade or install the older OS on a separate SD card, you can boot to it and install Steam Link with sudo apt install Steam Link. Simple. However, if you prefer to run Raspbian Bullseye, the latest version, it'll need to be the 64-bit version. Anyways, with all of that out of the way, what am I talking about? Well, here I have Steam Link. I'll open it up as you would normally, but because I'm running the latest version, this is what I see. X11 is not supported. Basically, it's the way that Steam Link sends things to your display and it's not supported on the latest version. It's a well-known thing and it's been an issue for roundabouts a year, maybe a bit longer, and there hasn't been a fix. Super annoying. However, there are workarounds and we'll be running through one of them in this video here. Now, of course, as any workaround is, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Essentially, what we'll be doing is we'll press a keyboard combination to exit this GUI completely, as in literally everything here, and go to a command line. Then when we run Steam Link, it'll open up as per usual. Essentially, you can hit Ctrl Alt F2 to exit the GUI and open a TTY2 terminal. When you're done playing games in the terminal, hit Ctrl Alt F7 and you'll return to the desktop GUI as we are here. It's a few extra steps, but it's easy enough to do. However, there are a few more steps than just installing Steam Link. Let's run through them. In the description below, you'll find a link to this blog post, last updated October 30th, 2022. According to Valve, it's just sudo apt install Steam Link, which it is. However, it doesn't work properly on the latest version. We'll start by reinstalling Steam Link. What does this command do? Well, it actually does more than just reinstall Steam Link. It runs it once, then installs missing dependencies and sets things up properly. So you'll see two options here. One of them is if you're already in the no GUI version, you're just in the TTY console, and a second version here that doesn't run the script, it'll save it first of all. Then you can exit the GUI and run it from just the command line using this here. So we'll copy the first line of this here and we'll paste it into a console. Just make sure you don't change the directory. So paste and enter. This will then download and save it as this, as you can see, Nano, all of these steps have been saved here. Now, all you need to do is Control Alt and F2. If you're using a VNC to connect to it, your screen will stop responding. You'll need to plug in your Raspberry Pi and use the onboard graphics. With this, unfortunately, I'll need to take pictures. Why? Well, I simply don't own expensive HDMI capturing hardware. So when you're on the terminal, enter your username, hit enter, enter your password, enter once more, and we'll be able to type stuff. Enter bash steamlink underscore install dot bash or just type bash space s and tab and it should automatically fill it out assuming nothing else in your home directory starts with s otherwise type out steam and hit tab. Then you'll be prompted about running with less than 128 megs of video memory. Just hit enter as we'll return to this later. Then it'll prompt you do you want to install everything? Hit y and enter. Then it'll download and install a ton of packages. When it's done, hit enter to continue. It'll copy some files around or link them. Enter once more and you'll boot into Steam Link. Hit enter to get started and you should already see computers you can connect to. What we want to do here is instead hit escape, escape again to exit back out to the command line and it should then copy files around and things like that. When it's eventually done, it'll return you back to the command line where you can type and now we can continue. You can simply type out Steam Link and hit enter at any stage in the TTY console to run Steam Link and play games. However, let's make it a bit better. Hit Ctrl Alt F7 to return to the Raspberry Pi GUI and open up a new terminal. Inside of here, we'll type sudo nano boot config.txt and such. Hit enter and we'll scroll down. We'll eventually pass DT overlay commented out, but a bit further down, we should see DT overlay VC4 KMS V3D. 
All we need to do here is edit it. So we'll use the arrow keys to go back and we'll enter an F just before K. So VC4 hyphen FKMS hyphen V3D. Steam Link is just a bit happier using the FKMS driver instead of KMS. Now to fix that GPU memory error we had earlier, we'll head back up to the top of the file and scroll down looking for GPU underscore mem. Now it doesn't seem mine is written anywhere here. So just after the last line here, before these green brackets, I'll enter in GPU underscore mem equals and 128. This will give us 128 megs of video memory, allowing us to stream games happily. You can raise this higher, though you don't really need to. You can go to say 256 if you have extra RAM to throw around. I've got eight gigs, so I'll go with 256, though it's probably more than fine on 128. Now, if you have a 4K monitor, you may get issues with Steam Link, as Steam Link apparently doesn't support 4K. We can, however, boot the Pi in 1080p, which will make our TV upscaled. Scrolling up to the very top, then down a little bit, you should see HDMI group and HDMI mode. I've already uncommented these. But if we set the group to 1 and change HDMI mode to 16, it should force it to boot in 1080p resolution and our screen or monitor will upscale it. I've got it in 82. It's also 1080p HDMI mode. 16 should be fine. Control S, Control X to close out of it after saving it. And we can close the terminal. Running Steam Link once again doesn't work from here. What we need to do is Control Alt F2 whenever we want to play, then type in Steam Link and hit enter. Steam Link will then open, we can connect to our PC as per usual, and have fun. When you're done playing games, hit Ctrl Alt F7 to return back to your desktop GUI. Why would you want to do this? Well, it's a few extra steps if you'd like to run on the bleeding edge. Otherwise, it'd probably really just be easier having a second SD card with the legacy version of Raspbian OS, at least while they're fixing this. It's already been a year, so a fix may never be coming. But anyways. This is how to do it, and it should work just fine. Why exactly would you want to do this instead of using something else like a Amazon Fire Stick, for example? Well, a lot of other devices have issues connecting to more than one Bluetooth controller, and the Fire Stick that we have, or even the two of them, seem to really have issues staying connected to just one, never mind two Bluetooth controllers. Anyways, there we go. I now have it connected. I have an Xbox controller here connected to my Raspberry Pi, and it's controlling things as you'd hope. If I head up to settings, you'll see here, that under controller, I've got two controllers, this one and the other Bluetooth controller I have connected. For some reason rumbles off on this one. There we go. Sweet. Anyways, this is great as both of these are working previously. Only one of these sort of worked on my Fire Stick. Anyways, let's test it out. Heading to say moving out, it'll fire up. I'll pick a save, load, and I can join with one controller, join with the other, and hey, I can even join with my keyboard if I'm at my PC. But anyways, Continuing, I can control player one and player two, both simultaneously using the two controllers in front of me, which is great. This isn't something I'm able to do on my PC with two wireless controllers as I don't have Bluetooth there. But the fact that it works great on a Raspberry Pi is just amazing. I'll definitely have this set up to play split screen and co-op games locally on the couch. Thank you all for watching. I've been Troubleshoot. Hopefully this video helped you and I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.